Oh, I'm following Buckwheat. That's not fair. It's very entertaining. And charming and attractive. What an asshole. <laughs> Screw that guy. Right? Tell us, us all about how you named the character after a boy you had a crush on. Speaking of, yes. <laughs> um, did he tell you the story about him auditioning and my embarrassing story? Do you want to hear that? Or do you have like a yes, yes. Okay, so here's what happened. So I'm old, as you can see, and had just like had a baby and was like, whatever. So he comes in and he's this super unbelievable, attractive guy and he starts reading for. And so I, my response to that is to laugh <laughs> because hotness is amusing. You know, I just was so like Twitter painted that I just started giggling. So the poor guy comes into audition and I'm laughing at him and he said uh, I'm sorry what's up and I said I'm sorry I'm just I'm really old and you're really cute we all had a, a yuck about it then he starts auditioning and he's auditioning for Blaine so he's in the middle of his audition I went what wait what's happening completely interrupted his audition I said no no you're not here for Blaine you're here for Major and the casting director's like he's here for Blaine like you're ruining this guy's audition shut the hell up <laughs> so he finishes audition he leaves and he leaves and I'm like he's Major we all looked at each other and we're like he's, he's totally major and then he came in and he's major and I have like 20 embarrassing Robert Buckley stories so I'll stop talking about <laughs> there, there is one where he accidentally in wardrobe was taking off his shirt while someone was handing me something that was shocking so it was like he takes off his shirt I grab the shocking piece of material and go holy shit and it looks like he took off his shirt and I went holy shit and um yeah that's why we're such good friends so the DVD extras for a season are going to be awesome right? yeah the DVD extras are just embarrassing situations in which my husband plans on using for divorce settlement of me accidentally hitting on Robert Buckley. Accidentally. Accidentally. Talk a little bit about the process of creating this Rob and how, where it started ideas and how it all came together. Um, how it came together is that Rob owns the world and has 10,000 projects and when he gets 10,000 in one he's like, uh, I'm excited to call Diane. <laughs> um, so we had just done the Veronica Mars movie so we just wrote that together and he, you know, directed it and did everything and they they, uh, Susan Rovner approached him with this property of I Zombie, and he knows that I'm a big zombie fan and a big comic book fan, a big sci fi fan. And he called me and said, I have the, Susan Rovner is interested in, in doing this project, I Zombie. And I was like, I'm in. I don't even know what it is, but I'm in. And then we started talking about it a little, and then I read the comics. And I knew that we couldn't do, while I love the comics, I knew that we couldn't do just on the CW and on network television. You couldn't really have like the Wear Terrier and the Ghost. And it's just, you couldn't, for comic books, it's great, but we couldn't really do that. But we, were inspired by the idea of this main character who who get who is stuck between being alive and dead and getting these a being forced to eat brains but also getting these flashes of people and you know um, when you're you have all the different shows of solving crime it's the the detectives or the police officers they're always invested in some way and sometimes it's they have like you know special connections to them or they have special abilities but I think it's rare I can't think of another show where the person actually gets parts of them, like has their memories and has like a little bit of them. And that investment in solving a person's murder is so interesting to me, like a layman having that and, and solving and trying to solve their murder. So I feel like I'm boring the crap out of you. I'm so sorry. Are we talking so, about Buckley again? So will it basically be like a case of the week? Or? Yeah. So it's like a zombie show, but then it also has this procedural, but much like Veronica Mars, the tone is, is humor. We were calling it a, a zombie or a zomba I don't know. But, um, it's a yeah. So it still has the humor, but there is a case of the week, and then there's this ongoing B story, zombie story uh, with Liv and Blaine, who's played by David Anders, who's amazing. Is your every worry that people have about another zombie thing? It's so I guess I. Have a weird, I had a weird word because I'm such a huge Walking Dead fan. Like it's a problem. Um, like if any of you know Chris Hardwick, I really just want to be on the Talking Dead so desperately because um, all I want to do is talk about it. But um, my fear was more that people would be coming to it expecting the Walking Dead and be like, "Wait, it's really I Zombie? There's really just one, and it's not all gore it, and it's, there's no apocalypse." But um, I think it's just so different. And I personally love getting in at the ground floor of a zombie apocalypse. Or it's always an apocalypse. It's never just like a zombie slight cold that a couple people in the Parsippany area get and then they contain it. It's always like the apocalypse. So just having it be one girl and the, at first and the onus of that 
is just so interesting and I think different for zombie fans. I think also like like zombie fans, they they, they want to talk about it. They don't want, they want to debate it. They'll probably have lots of fun pointing out all the things you did wrong. But like they also like there's they like I believe the I personally do the variations like the different you have your Romeros, you have your your 28 Days Later, you have your World War Z. It's like there's always you have your Walking Dead. There's like different kinds and different ways that it happens. And it's, to me, it's fun to explore and it's a different way of doing it. But I'm terrified that zombie fans will be pissed or like not you know into it. But you can't make everybody happy. But as long as we have like a one cool zombie moment, like we have like in each episode, there's like a cool zombie moment, and then it yeah. What's your favorite cool zombie moment? I can't tell you. <laughs> there's one that I love so much that it's so hard for me not to tell you because it delights me. But how will we know what it was once yeah. you see it? Give us when you see it and you're delighted. <laughs> okay, and if you're not delighted, it might still be the thing I was delighted by, and we might just not have the same taste. But I like to think that we're on the same page with that. But um, yeah. So I'm sorry, guys. I hope you get like some good next. <laughs> Or Rob. You were lovely. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were mentioned, you mentioned some of the changes that you made for some of the stuff. Are you drawing some of the story elements out of it, or is it just the main character that really inspired? And you're of the comic? Yeah. Of the comic? Yeah. And are you taking it in your face be taking that your own way? Well, we've kind of taken it our own way, but it's amazing to kind of look back and see what inspired us that we didn't even really, that we didn't even know inspired us. And excuse me if I, did I talk about the lake at all? No. So it's like one of the things, like just in the, I don't know if you're familiar with the comics, but like in the second, installment they um it starts off with a flashback of the Gwendolyn character at the lake and they're talking about this massacre of the Indians with these octopus creatures and it wasn't even in our mind when we were doing the lake massacre for I Zombie it, it, we weren't like oh let's try to get the octopus Indian flashback in one comic and make it turn into something else like we didn't even realize the things that we were picking up on and it's really it's things like that kind of sneak in but there's thus far there's no other characters like there's no wear terrier or you know, Oh, okay. Sorry, but thanks a lot. Great. But I, I keep—I almost grabbed all these phones.